Hi guys, it's Denma and welcome to the Wolf's Den and welcome back to the Wolf's Den. And today is my part three of my heart story Q&A session, um, which is 30 questions broken up into three 10 minute or 10 question videos. Uh, the, these were compiled from Lazy MC, Facebook friends that were curious about things, and just general questions I had seen on the internet. Um, I've got them here and you don't have to watch these in any specific you don't have to watch these in any specific order. There are already two more videos prior to this, so so they should be linked below if you need to if you want to watch them. Um, yeah, at the, you can always ask me questions about my health issues, be it my heart health or my mental health, and I can answer them as best as I can for you. Um, if I don't know the answer, I will try to find out via my doctors if I can get with them. So we're on question 21. We'll be doing question 21 through 30, obviously. Um, question 21, what was the weirdest experience while you were in the hospital? There's a few. The first time I was admitted to Duke, I was swarmed by nurses. Um, it's stripped and questioned, and like, they were getting your, your registration, and at the same time they were getting like, all dirty smog from the other hospital, because I had been there like, almost a month, well, maybe two weeks. Um, and they had only given me one smock to where they didn't ask me if I needed to bathe, or if I needed a new smock, and I was just, distracted by being in the hospital. I I had used the bath wipes, but I had put dirty smock back on. Like, it had blood stains on, on it from, like, when they had to do some procedure. But, um, that's kind of TMI, but this whole part is TMI. But, yeah, they questioned me. They were wiping me down with the bath wipes. Um, thank God they had them in the warmer. Oh, my God, they felt so good. Um, they stuck a swab up my nose to test me for MRSA. Um, and then one of the nurses gave me a pack of the bath wipes and said, for me to wash my perennial area. And I was like, what? And she's like, you're private. I'm like, oh, I call that my Pikachu. And she just cracked up. Um, so that was one. I was still shy and I was covering everything up because there was a building like 200 feet away that I could see in their windows. And if I could see in their windows, they could see in mine. So it's like, eh, until they got my smock on. So, um, also during that stay, uh, they had one of their stress management doctors come in because they were they were evaluating my psych stuff, and they said I was bipolar, and they had the stress people come in. And he actually has a couple videos here on YouTube. I'll try to link them if he still has them up. Um, do breathing exercises and stuff. I just couldn't relax because his voice was identical to Jerome from Gotham. If you know who that is, um, basically that it, that version of the Joker. Um, so just imagine the Joker giving you directions to, or advice to help relieve stress. It's just comical. So, um, also one of the food people, the boys, um, he was really creepy because he was dropping off my food and he kept staring at me, giving me this like Pennywise look and you know, legit look like Bill Skarsgård, but not like in a good way. <laughs> um, and it really creeped me out. Luckily, I only saw him that one time, because um, you just never see your it's the same food service worker that delivers the food at the same time. They have so many. Um, but yeah, that kind of creeped me out. I was just doing this creepy smile and stare, and was just like, eh, no. Did you have any emergencies in the hospital? Only two that I know of. Um, they were going to put what they call an umbrella over the ruptured membranes in my heart to help with the, see if that was going to help with the pressure in the heart. Um, but as soon as they placed it, my pressure started dropping. I wasn't exactly crashing, per se, but I was on my way to start crashing. So they had to take it off, and they aren't able to repair the holes in my heart because it causes my blood pressure or my whatever pressure to go too low. So um, I was actually getting that done on Valentine's Day, uh, this, yeah, 2016, because I was joking with the nurse. I'm like, yep, I'm trying to get my broken heart fixed on Valentine's Day, so... Um, and it was snowing outside. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, because we get snow here until about the end of February if we have any flurries. We don't get, like, in piles and piles of snow. We just get, like, a couple of inches, but I still like it as snow. Um, they awarded the procedure. Um, the second thing was I had been transferred from the NICU in Duke to observation in the dialysis unit at Duke. Um, the day before, I had had a migraine all day, and I told them the only thing... That I could take from my migraine that works is Fioraset. And then you can see it on my MyChart um, account. And even like if it's not, 
as long as it's in the MyChart system, they can access it remotely so they can see my doctor which has prescribed it to me. But they didn't give it to me, they just gave me ty one Tylenol. So the next day, I was woken up at 5 a.m. from a lady, a phlebotomist, which is the people that draw your blood, at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I opened my eyes and everything's blurry. And I'm freaking out. Um, she was trying to put me to draw blood, but I was like pulling back because I have to see the needle and everything going in. I don't know why, otherwise I'll jump. Um, but I'm like, stop, I can't see. And she's like, had an attitude, like I had like interrupted her. Good day. And she's like, what do you mean you can't see? Like, just like that. And I'm like, everything's blurry. And I was backing up on the bed, trembling, near about pissed myself because I don't know what's going on. Um, and she had the attitude, like, you're just overreacting. Um, so they sent the eye doctor down and he did that um, thing where they dilute your, put the stuff in your eyes, get dilate, dilate it. There we go. Not dilate, dilate. Um, and I had to read the chart. Like the vision charts and tests that covered one eye and this eye and then he had this other thing that had this bright light that he wore on like it looked like something from a steampunk movie um so he could look inside my pupils or whatever i don't know what he was gonna and he did confirm that my right eye was actually um reacting a lot slower than my left eye they weren't reacting together at all so um, he said he didn't think it was anything permanent. He thought he agreed with me and thought it was just a weird side effect from me having the migraine all day and not having the correct medicine given to me. And it was like a really bad one. I haven't had one that bad in a while. So he's like, we'll just wait and see if it like eases up and goes away on its own. If it doesn't, or if you have any more concerns, get the nurse to call me back down. I'll happily come back down. Um, but a few hours later, it returned to normal. It was. It was terrifying losing my sight just for that amount of time. You just wake up and you can't see. I I just cannot imagine what somebody, if they happened to somebody, what they would be going through. I mean, and it wasn't like it was like darkness. It was, my vision was so blurry. I could only see like large shapes, like a person. I could see that large shape, very, very blurry. Or the, like the TV, like not that it was on, but I could see where it was, but other than that, I couldn't see anything. I had to get my mom to lead me into the bathroom. And it was just crazy. Number 23. You talked about your parents visiting at Duke, but any of your other family visit. Um, the second trip up to Duke, my sister and um, her mother, which is my step aunt, I guess, um, they lived close to Duke in the Raleigh area. They did come to visit um, Nightdale, where they live. Um, on my last trip from observation, I had mentioned my sister to the doctors and doing the rounds. Um, not the doctor that said my medicine is failing me, but another one. And when I said her name, they both looked at each other and had this awkward look. And they're like, yeah, we'll not comment on that because some of us may know your sister. Um, my sister was at the top of the food chain in the pharmacy and her husband was at the top of the food chain in the cardiology, pulmonary, respiratory area until he left and they had a really nasty divorce and my sister kind of went psycho <laughs> she's much better now i mean she's still like she's a bipolar tigger like i was a eeyore she's a tigger and um because she had mentioned that she knew the doctor so that's why i brought it up and yeah they were very uncomfortable at that moment in time and i could see that that's the only time anybody visited um other than my parents nobody called or like sent me an email or a private message or a text the only time anybody would reply if I, was, I posted a selfie of me with IV bags or something on Facebook um so even then it was just like a like or a heart or whatever it wasn't like a how are you feeling or how's it going or something like that uh question 24 what was the coolest thing you had experienced at the hospital Okay, well, most of the, every time I got a room, it was located kind of catty corner to the helicopter pads. So I got to see the helicopters land and take off, and that was really cool. Um, also, on my second visit, because um, my last two visits were just for observation. My first two visits, I was in the NICU and then moved to observation. Um, they had tornado warnings really bad storms now it's just enjoying the storm and the nurses had to come all and drop these blinds or shades that were special 
made for storms. I'm like, if it's a tornado, it's going to break the glass anyway and suck me out. At least let me see this damn thing. But no, I couldn't see it. I could hear it, but I couldn't see it. Um, the last thing wasn't really exciting to a lot of people, but to me it was. Um, when I was in observation, there was a, they were building another building next to ours, and it was like skyscraper high. It was huge. Um, and there was this huge crane, and I always, when I looked at it, I could never see it moving. And so I was like, are they even working on it? And one day I finally caught it moving, because it's just this huge crane in this little itty bitty room, like, I'm like, what if they have to go to the bathroom? Is there like a bathroom on the other side of it or like a porta potty or something? Because they're like 20, 30 stories up in the air. Um, but yeah, in that time, it was also earlier in the year um, and it was snowing and the day after it was really windy and you can you could see like the crane like wiggling from how windy it was. And these guys were just walking around the bare bones of this building like nonchalantly like, what's up? It's just like, you think because there's no walls yet it's winds just going straight through and whipping like the plastic and everything it's just I don't see how they could do it it was that was scared the crap out of me question, question 25 how have people treated you in the public in the public let me do that again question 25 how have people treated you in public well sometimes I get snotty looks from like older people because I'm using a scooter they think I'm just like a kid playing with a scooter or not that, that I actually need it just because you can't see my illness doesn't mean it's not there and that's one of the bad things about having an, um, an invisible illness so to speak it's because you, there's no way to actually like, prove unless I say hey I need it because of this it's going into my this tube is going in my chest in order to keep me alive and I can't walk very far distances I don't think you still have to get your whole life story in order for you to use a damn electrical scooter um but yeah like, I don't get stares from, like, teenagers or anything like that. Um, it's just usually, like, elderly people. And, like, if there's somebody that looks worse off than I am, I'll give them the scooter first. I had this happen one time. And it was funny because we were in Kroger getting groceries for an overnight stay at the VA. So I was, in the, I was getting ready to get a scooter, but um, it was going to be a quick trip, so I wouldn't have to walk very much. But this lady came in all on her cane or whatever and then all of a sudden she, I was like you can have the scooter I, I'll walk she's like okay thanks and like my dad went down to the clearance section which is at the opposite end to see if there was anything worth going down there for and he saw the lady on the scooter and she was getting up walking back and forth back and forth um down the aisle getting something without the cane without stumbling without like shaking so it's like you try to do something generous and selfless and it punts and bites you in the ass. I'm like, I could have used that. But it was fine. I just, after a few minutes, I went and just sat down because there was a Starbucks in the um, store. So I just sat down at Starbucks. I get a lot of uh, kids asking me questions. Like, they'll see my IV and stare. And they'll start asking me things. And their, their parents are quick to, like, shut them up because they think that I'm going to get a, um, offended. And I'm like, no, no, it's fine. I explain what it's there for and... They ask questions and I'll sit there and answer all the questions till they're done. I'm like, it's not going to hurt anybody. Um, it doesn't bother me. I've I'm, I'm had this for two years, so. Um, kids are kids. <laughs> and whenever I go back to the Walmart I used to work at, um, all the employees that I worked with usually stop and talk to me and give me the updates and stuff. Even there's, there's this one from Electronics um, that we worked together like in the store. But we really didn't talk while I was working there. But we've gotten really close since I left and come back. Um, and every time I'm in there, we'll talk, we'll talk about 10, 15 minutes. Um, how I, like, she, I need her help finding something so that the managers only walk by. Because we have a whole bunch of managers that weren't there when I was working there. So they don't know me. And they don't know as a former employee. So, yeah. So I don't want her to get in trouble. Um, also, the pharmacy I go to, which isn't a Walmart pharmacy, it's just an independent. Um, all the employees, they're used to no money. Like, it, recently, I don't know if, like, a bunch of employees quit or they changed, like, the shift times or what. But it's like every time I've gone, it's been a new patch of techs, pharmacy techs, and none of them know me, which doesn't offend me or bother me. But the ones that I was used to, they would know who I was. They'd automatically grab my medicine 
asked me how I'm doing, want to update, and it's just like, and they were very friendly. This new batch is like, they're just there for a paycheck. Other batch, they cared, so they knew names, they check on you, and like, they knew everybody. But I don't know if I'm just not going when they're there, or if they did get fired, or quit, or if they had new management, I don't know. Um, my parents pick up my medicine a lot too. Um, and they haven't seen me either. There's like one girl that's still there from like the original batch, and that's it. Question 26. Does exercise help you? Exercise is uh, like a double-edged sword for me. To a degree, it does help. Um, and it's about building up my cardiac system, um, so it works better, if that makes sense. Um, there are certain programs that work with the, from the doctor um, that work with the gyms to help patients with cardiac problems help build up their stamina and their muscles and all that stuff in the heart area. But the closest gym is an hour away and price of the gym membership plus price of gas and only being able to go once a week is not worth it. So what I'm going to do is when it cools down go on Craigslist and get me a, a used treadmill and a used um, stationary bike and put them on the back porch and that way I'm there at my house, I'm being supervised, and if anything happens, I've got my parents for a lazy PC there um, to take care of it, get an ambulance, you know, whatever. Because um, we live around the highway, so I used to love bike riding, but if in order to ride your bike in this little town, you'd have to actually put it on the back of your truck or car or van or whatever and drive it into town, and that's just too much of a hassle. So I figured stationary bike is the way to, for me. So. Yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to that because it'll help build the muscles back up. I'm hoping because, like, and you guys probably don't notice it, but I notice that when I'm, like, sitting down and I can feel my bones and, like, there's, like, no, hardly, not a lot of tissue. I'm not, like, Eugenia Cooney level by far, but it's just I can see the difference of my legs, like, the muscle mass is, like, gone. Question 27. How did you pass the time when you were admitted for longer than a week? Well, if I had my laptop, I was playing World of Warcraft or watching YouTube videos, and oftentimes I would go down the paranormal type video rabbit hole, or uh, my car crashes, plane crashes, those weird type of videos. I don't know why, I'm just fascinated by them, trying to figure out why something would ha like, why did that plane fall down out of the air or something like that. Um, like, Let's Screen is one of my favorite channels because they have like a lot of gory videos, like talking about weird things like that so um if I didn't have my computer I'd read a lot um I'd do sudoku because I would take I have this like trap hospital kit that has a big sudoku book in it and a word search book and let's see coloring that was the thing I did um I don't watch TV when I'm in the hospital. The only time I watched TV was the Oscars when Leo was going to win his Oscar. I was like, I, he better win it because I hate watching like award shows live. I usually just download them off the Pirate Bay so that way I can fast forward the bits I don't care about. Um, but yeah, I got to see him win his Oscar and that's when Vine was up and everybody was like freaking out. So I think he should have won an Oscar for Gatsby, but no. Or what's eating Gilbert Grape. Definitely he should have won an Oscar for that. So, question 28, um, this might be dark, but do you think your failed suicide attempt had anything to do with it? Honestly, I have felt these symptoms before the episode, but I do think trying to overdose did impact it somehow, I think, on possibly speeding up the progress of the disease. Um, but the doctors have told me mainly that mine is probably hereditary because my biological grandmother had it. She was diagnosed in her 40s and she lived to be in her late 60s so I'm like that's about the time frame I'm looking at um since like 20 years and I was diagnosed two years ago I might have about 18 years left so if I make it that long I don't know um but yeah it might have happened it could have had an impact on it but I never said that to anybody so like I said I was feeling the symptoms before then for years like the can't catch my breath asthma type thing so, but yeah, that probably helped a little bit. Um, question 29. You mentioned in an earlier video that you wouldn't get a heart and lung transplant. Can you elaborate? 
well, I believe everybody has the time to go. And when my time comes, it comes. Um, I never ever thought I would make it into like an elderly age. Um, even when I was younger and not battling with depression. Like, you know how teachers or people ask you, where do you stick yourself in 20 years? It would be dark blackness. Like, no fairy tale wedding, no white picket fences with a dog in the yard. Just, like, darkness. Um, so, I would rather those important organs go to someone who would thrive with them than somebody who doesn't really care to keep going. It's not, like, I, I'm cynical about it. It's just, I want those organs to go to somebody who wants to keep going. Another thing is, for I think about six months before you have the transplant, you have to be off of any mental illness medication and pain medications. And you have to take these other medications so your body is more likely to accept the transplant. And, um, and those, and the mental illness, pain meds, stuff like that can interact with the transplant medications. So, which is what I was told, I, and uh, I just finally got to a good place in my head with my mental health, um, and I'd rather have a shorter lifespan than to go back to that deep black abyss of depression. Again, I... Even if you do take all these meds and you do the stuff like you have to lose so many pounds and you have to go through like, um, like, it's kind of like when you're getting like, like a sex change surgery, you have to kind of like, they have to assess you. They have to assess you to be if you, if, see if you'd be a viable candidate. So I mean, they said mental illness doesn't really impact that decision because you can get back on those medications afterwards, I guess. I just, I'd rather not. Um, I've had depression so long and I've been fighting it so long and to finally go days without thinking about suicide or even thinking about like I'm a burden and stuff like that. I, I'm not enjoying life. Like, I'm not like, yay, everything's like bright yellow and bubbly and happy, but I'm not like, ooh, not the depressed kid that doesn't talk to anybody. Um, I don't feel like I'm losing the battle anymore. I, you still have the risk of even afterwards the, the organs not being accepted by your body, even with medications prior and after. And I think I touched on this a little bit in my ER video. Um, if I went through with it, my anxiety level would be like, woof way high because it would be somebody else's organs and mine. It's not like they're 3D printed organs or like grown in a lab. These organs were in somebody else's body and now they're in mine and that would make my anxiety so much worse than it is now and I'm not saying other people should not go through this or go through with get, not getting a lab transplant. This is just my personal opinion on my situation. If you or somebody that they're considering that with, you have to make the best decision on your own, regarding your own wellness. This is not like a blanket decision for everybody. It's just my opinion, my lifestyle, my choice, so. And the last question, question 30, is how has your family, other than Lazy NBC, reacted to your situation? For the most part, they've been supportive. Um, Fluffy Cat, my son, understands why I have it in this medicine, in his words, so I don't die. <laughs> he hates it when I go to the hospital, though. He always gets really upset, and with him having autism, it kind of screws up his really normal routine of the normal environment that he's in. Um, and I've had two rides in an ambulance to get to the hospital, and I always make sure they don't, I ask them not to play the sirens, because, I mean, we're like maybe a mile from the um, EMT, the ambulance station. I don't know what they're called. Um, I'm like, don't turn the sirens on because it's going to trigger my husband, my son and he's going to freak out and cry and go into a, a fit that's going to be hard for him to get out of. So, um, 
My parents are the only one I got the pick line for. Um, they bribed me with a giant stuffed cat, who I named Expensive Kitty Kitty II. Um, because when I was little, I had a expensive kitty kitty stuffed animal. That, um, it was a cat stuffed animal that was really expensive. So I named her Expensive Kitty Kitty. And this is just the second. And it, it's big, big. It was $50. And I'm like, so you can just buy my agreement to do this, I suppose. Um, what can I say? Cats are my weakness, so I didn't think down the road like it would limit me so much than how, how it does, but um, but I never did it for me. Um, the doctor said that if I didn't get this line put in, that when I was going to be discharged, um, I would be going home to hospice care. I was that bad off. Um, and my dad gets frustrated. Because I can't really contribute other than that. They're mostly supportive. Um, my mom is really good about dealing with this and helping me out. Making sure I don't overexert myself. And making sure if I'm in a store that I'm not like walking for a very long time. Or um, things like that. My siblings don't really discuss it. Um, it hasn't brought us closer or anything. Um, my biological mom called me and talked to me for a few hours about it. Um, because her mom was the one um, that had the same issue. Um, she was on the same exact type of medicine, except hers, mine is Felitri, and hers was Flowland. In Flowland, you have to keep cool, so you'd get a little fanny pack, and it had a separate compartment to put your um, ice pack in. So we would like, just compare the whole process. And so. Um, the doctors did say last time I was in the hospital for observation that they were working on a medication that does the same thing as Felitri and Flogland, but it's already mixed and it has a longer shelf time, so they can send you out month supplies at a time without you having to mix it. All you gotta do is pop it, pop it into your um, pump or whatever kind of device um, that they'll be using with it, but um, it's gonna be a couple, a couple of years at least before it gets like approved and all that. They're testing it, I think, now. Um, but if I make it that long, it'll be nice not having to mix anymore. But other than that, those are my 30 questions that I had gotten and gathered. And I hope they were informative. Um, like I said, part one and two I've already done. You don't have to watch them in any specific order. Um, I'll link them below or at the end of the video. And if you have any other questions that I didn't answer, definitely feel free to ask. And I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And until next time, like and subscribe. Join the pack. We would love to have you here. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.